Hi, I'm Colleen, and this is Colleen Sews and Chats on YouTube. I am making a bag. It is my own design, and let's hope that I've wrote the directions down right, because it's a year later when I'm recording the voiceover. I am using muslin for the lining, insulin bright for the insulating part of the tote, some flannel, and this is a Better Homes and Garden. It's a heavier, I don't know if it's decor, weight or canvas i don't remember if i find it i'll put it in <laughs> okay and these are compression gloves they help if you have arthritis and swelling in your hands and i have a lot of that and this is what i'm going to call fabric b happens to coincide for the bottom of the tote and i need a 14 by 28 inch piece of this and that's why I got a little bit of thicker fabric this is from Walmart so you know it's not really thick in fact later I think you can see through it a little bit light but it's still it's it's pretty thick and it works for my purposes which is an insulated tote I'm using two rulers because it was kind of hard to get the 28 by 14 out of this that number does not sound right to me all of a sudden but that's what I have written down so that's what I'm gonna go with <laughs> uh, disclaimer here this pattern has not been tested by anybody but me and it was designed by me so if there is problems with it uh, do not be surprised <laughs> okay back to the video I don't think I mentioned I should have ironed my fabrics first. I didn't want to. <laughs> That's all there was to it. I didn't want to. I do eventually iron them, but... And then I fold the piece that I cut out of back up because I'm extra like that. I don't just leave them out usually. Occasionally I do, but I like to put things back away because it is a small space. It works better for me. Okay, where are my instructions? Now, this is the flannel that I'm using. I didn't do anything special to the flannel. And again, I'm folding it because I'm, this flannel, I need two 15 by 28 inch pieces. And I'm trying to do my math. This takes much longer than it should. <laughs> Because I'm trying to do it in as few cuts as possible. This is actually, the flannel will be the, I guess, the sides of the tote. Now there was some math involved with folding it over, you know, and cutting it. Divide whatever I needed by two, fold it over till I have that size, blah, blah, blah. And then trim it till it's the right size. I should have put music in here or something. Y'all don't want to hear me ramble. I do like to ramble though, so I'm going to keep rambling. Alright, I've got my two pieces of flannel. And my one piece for the bottom. And now I'm going to get the lining piece cut out. Which I, I did iron. I decided I could not work with that thin piece of fabric, all wrinkled like that, so I, I did iron that one. Um, let's see, the lining fabric is 43.5 by 28. And what I kind of did here is I used the Inselbrite. Inselbrite came in 40 inch width of fabric, or I'm sorry, 45 inch width of fabric. So I was kind of, that kind of determined how big the bag was going to be. I didn't want to have to piece the insulin bride or anything, but I wanted a larger bag for groceries and stuff because we live out of town. And these are great to have in the trunk when you go to the store. Yes, you can buy them. I just thought it'd be cool to try to make one. And that did. <laughs> okay, I may need more coffee actually I haven't had any coffee yet and it's early at the moment 
Okay, so I've got that done. Now I'm doing the math so I can get my 43 and a half by 28 out of this. And I will tell you that I did cut it a little bit big on one side, but I just tucked it in. It's hidden my lining. I, I, I really, it doesn't bother me. <laughs> After all that trouble to get it cut. And this is the insel bright, like I said. This will be with the fabric, which is 45 inches for what the piece that I have in the package, by 29 inches. So that made it a little bit easier. You can, clearly not easy enough. And I got my 60 millimeter rotary cutter because Insel Bright is thick. And there's all of our fabrics cut for the bag. The placket I do separately. So I'm going to line the long edges of the bottom and the sides up. I'm just giving them a hand smooth and I pin them. And then I realized I need to put the straps in here. So I found the center and then I just, how far from the sides? Let's see. Do I have that written down? Good thing it takes me a long time to do this. I went a quarter of an inch. Okay, there we go. I measured five inches from the center for the straps. The straps are 249 inch long. Honestly, I don't know this. if this is regular strapping. I think what I did and don't laugh. <laughs> I think I got one of those um, like moving straps that come with like a pulley from our Walmart because it was cheaper than strapping. I wanted to see if it would work. Yeah, that's what I did for this one. I'm sure I got strapping too, but for this one I did that. Anyway, when I put the strapping in, I put it a quarter inch past those raw edges. So it's sticking out past my raw edge fabrics of fabric A and B right there. You can see it. That's a pretty good shot. And five inches from the center of those. And I am pinning, pin, clip, I don't know if these, meh. If your clips are deep enough, they could clip there. And finally, the sewing. I backstitched at the beginning and at the end, I'm going over the straps a couple times, just to reverse them back because I want to make sure they're in there sturdy. And by the way, in case I haven't said it, I, I know nothing about making bags. My friends gave me tips, but, and they're geniuses. I have to do it before I can figure it out. So stop making fun of me, friends. I can hear you judging me. <laughs> It's a half inch seam allowance here. I wanted to make sure it was larger. I, I don't, it's probably got a good reason for that, but I just thought a half inch would be better. You may have to elongate your stitch to accommodate thicker fabrics. Then it's just a matter of sewing a semi straight line. We're not going to lie and say I can sew a straight line because we all know I can't. And now I've got the handles in. And see, that's what I was saying about that fabric. You can kind of see the light through, but it's still very thick. Now we're going to line it with the insel bright. And the insel bright, of course, I made bigger than the bag itself. I was trying to make sure my straps are straight coming up these sides. So I'm pinning the insel bright, the strap, the fabric, you know, pinning it all down so it doesn't shift on me. And I'm pinning the center piece. I've got my seams turned going towards the center. And I'm just going to fiddle with this until I get those straps straight and as square as I can. Perfection is just not in my wheelhouse. I know there's lots of channels that do it well. 
and I'm not going to do this 20 times just so I can show you something that's probably still not perfect. <laughs> okay, silence is golden and I need some of it. Now the inner side of these straps should be 10 inches apart because we put them both five inches from the middle. That sounds right. I'm trying to make sure they're straight across from each other because they were not looking straight to me. They don't look straight in the camera. There's, there's a word for that. I, I'm not coming up with it. <laughs> put a couple pins along the outer edges so I don't have to worry about it flopping all over when I've got it sewing these straps on. I didn't buy any like special thread or anything. I'm just using my polyester 40 weight thread that I have. And I'm doing a top stitch, which is about an eighth from my seam line right there. That's going to keep that inner seam underneath from shifting or separating or anything like that. And I'm trying my best. A walking foot may have helped here, but we like to live dangerously. <laughs> And I'm going to go over these straps. I think this is sped up a little bit because I am going, you know, painfully slow. I'm worried about my threads breaking because it's so thick and all that. So I, I am going pretty slow. And I'm telling you right here. The form I am using is not good on my shoulders. You know, do better than me. <laughs> For whatever reason, and I'm not exactly sure what caused it, but right at the end, my bobbin sometimes, for some reason, comes the thread comes undone. I have it in there, right? It'll just come off the loop it's supposed to be on, and it kind of nested, so I had trouble getting that off. But I'm going to go down both these seams with that top stitch, back stitch, at the beginning and at the end.
And now I'm going to tackle those straps, which, you know, I just used my best judgment. I'm probably the same top stitching eighth inch away. I say probably because, you know, some genius did not write that down on the pattern. <laughs> Constant supervision, people. <laughs> I didn't have any. <laughs> so I'm trying to do this without cutting my threads. So I'm going to go straight down this one side. And I did not mark where I wanted to stop, so I'm figuring that out. And I figured out three inches from the top of that handle. I just didn't want to go all the way to the top. I've seen bags, and I just, I thought I liked this look. Actually, correction, that would be two and a half inches. I can read a ruler too. <laughs> okay. So those of you that I've confused, that's two and a half inches from the raw edge of the fabric. I'm going to stop and turn, and I'm going to put a couple X's to reinforce this. So I'm going to come across the handle and stop approximately an eighth before the edge. And turn it. I probably should have turned it the other way. Monday morning quarterbackers. Shh. <laughs> so I'm going to come down and I'm pretty sure this is where I put my first X. Again, at two and a half inches. I go down and I come back across the strap. And after I turn it, I'm going to do the X. I'm doing it from left to right. Yeah, how many people didn't think I knew my left from my right? <laughs> going straight across the strap and then I'll do the other side of the X, right to left. And I'll do the same thing at the bottom. And for all four straps. Let's see how this plays out. <laughs> I'm sorry if you thought you were going to get a very serious person this today, whatever it is where you are. <laughs> Shenanigans. My favorite word. Just saying. Again here, I was just kind of doing it on the fly, so two, two and a half inches, you know. <laughs> it's a pattern, not a recipe. That probably made no sense. And if you've got tips, leave them in the comments. I always appreciate constructive criticism. Clearly I don't know what I'm doing, I'm not afraid to admit it. <laughs> So, go ahead and leave them in the comments, and I hold all of my comments until I have a time to check them and put them up. Sometimes I'm quicker than others, and I apologize for that. Some days are good, some days aren't. Wow, I'm human. Who knew? <laughs> I am doing my best. To constantly check my fabrics to make sure everything's smooth, everything's down. I'm not going to get any puckers. I'm not going to get any weird unintended pleats. All of that stuff. So that's why I'm constantly stopping and smoothing it down.
Quick tip, I rolled the bag, the extra that is in the back of my machine, so it would fit back there better as I did the other two handles. And if I haven't mentioned it yet, this is going to be a three-part series. No, I, I, I don't listen to myself when I talk. <laughs> but hey! This is going to be a three-part series because 30 minutes of video is about all my internet wants to upload and then it takes hours and the gamers get very unhappy in the house and I understand that. I would too. <laughs> so I get up early to try to beat them to the computer and the time <laughs> and this will do it for this video. Enjoy some highlights from the next video coming up right here. Y'all take care. Be the light you hope to see in others. And have a great week.